Are you a Warwick Kappa fan? Everyone was a Warwick Kappa fan back in the day. Kappa climbs and marks spectacularly. The day being the 1980s when he was flying high for the Sydney Swans. Kappa at the back, got the simple mark. Kappa, Kappa! Could sure take a hang Oh yeah, not so much with the kicking for Warwick. Kappa, well even he should get the distance from there. 45 metres out, the accuracy leaves a lot to be desired though. The Wiz is back in the headlines not for his kicking ability or singing ability. I only take what's mine. But because of his ass, which has just been crowned the best on show when he was playing for the Swans and then the Brisbane Bears. Oh, those shorts. Could not slide a cigarette paper between the inside of his duds and his scrotum. These things were sprayed on. Who's doing the judging? A woman named Marianne Kenworthy, who has seen her fair share of asses over the years because she is Australia's most experienced and most enduring brothel madam. Kenworthy is the owner of the Langtree's Bordello Empire, which started in Victoria Park in Perth about 40 years ago, next to the police union headquarters, believe it or not. She then expanded to Kalgoorlie, where the Hay Street brothel stalls were part of local folklore. Canberra, which is filled with cashed-up kink chasers. And I work on an adult sex line to make ends meet. And Darwin, which, let's face it, it's just loose. When are we going to see you in the NT? Kenworthy had caused to reminisce about Kappa's ass while she was recently appearing on his podcast. Limber up, mate. Here we go. Stretch it out, mate. Stretch Come it. Come down, girl. That's not my penis. Which probably won't be considered a reliable reference tool for future historians charting this country's social and political development in the early 21st century. I only take what's mine. Oh, episode Period. 29. But it is good fun. Hmm. Well, Marianne had a prop. A framed plaster cast of Warwick's butt cheeks, which was taken on a massage table at her Kalgoorlie brothel 24 years ago. Do I even want to know why? Because there wasn't much chop in the idea that he could immortalise that ass by dipping it into some wet concrete out the front of the brothel. There apparently was a lot of chop on the massage table, though. Kenworthy has recounted how Kappa could probably reach the goal square from the 50 metre line just by thrusting his hips. She said, Warwick's got what we girls in the industry call a shower, not a grower. It didn't get much longer when he was on the job, but it didn't need to. Oh, God. You stay classy, San Diego. Well, we haven't got started yet. Hey, this is Warwick Kappa and a 40-year sex factory veteran. It's not going to be a classy episode. But mainly, stay classy. Marianne went on to say, when we were taking the cast, it would slide out to one side like an elephant trunk and we'd need to get him to tuck it back in. Frisky, are we? So it didn't get covered in plaster. Let's move on. Full story in all its classy glory is available to read for free at thenightly.com.au. I bet Marianne's Canberra brothel did okay on the weekend. The Rebels bikey gang, National Run was in town, so yeah, probably was. And the club boss complained about the police attention. But first of all, they brand you as a criminal. So I'm a crim I haven't got no criminal record. I've run for politics, everything. I'm a criminal. I know one way it can make you a criminal. If you decide to get your punch on with another bikey while people are ordering their dinner at a restaurant. Yeah. Hey, uh, go on. Eh? Go on. Yeah, uh, finish it then. Which is what police say happened on March 10 at a fish and chip shop in Perth's East. I've got a steak sandwich and I'll perch and chips to go on. When a rebel and a mongol ran into each other while ordering some gummy sharp, a pineapple fritter, and five bucks worth of chips. Which suburb? The suburb where all the bikies do their Sunday night takeaway fighting. Please explain. Who was the rebel? No idea. The mongol? Who do you think? Oh. Fresh from a short stint behind bars in South Australia where he was busted associating with someone he shouldn't have. And fresh from a win against the cops after they dropped charges of possessing objectionable material on his phone, Troy McCanty's now facing charges over an alleged punch-up at an Ellenbrook chippy. Reckon they'll stick? I have no idea. I've been too busy thinking about puns about batter and assault. Anyway, the obvious problem the cops will have is the first rule of Fish Fight Club is the same as regular Fight Club. You do not talk about Fight Club. And with both bikies likely to refuse to talk, because code of silence... Zip it, go! And most witnesses likely to refuse to talk, because... That's the kind of love I had. It'll all come down to what the camera saw, which, as we know, can be quite a lot. 
<laughs> I'm Ben Harvey. For more update, click the subscribe button below.